Um, so now on to um, our next session. Obviously, we have two streams running at the same time. Um, if you go over to stream two, you're going to be looking at um, the Met Office, and Stu will be over there introducing Ross from the Met Office. And now, right this second, we have a TikTok Q and A expert panel with um, the guys at Table. I mean, Esme, Yanan, Ollie Burton, creator from Ollie B, and Dan again. <laughs> so Dan's going to be just on that panel as well. So welcome, guys. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for Hi, having yeah. us. And so um, we're, I think we'll jump straight into our panel, um, and I think we'll start off with a little introduction from each of our panelists um and if you could just tell us you know obviously what we've heard from dan in the session before which was great hearing about all the stuff at british world record and how you guys are using tiktok to activate um but if you could each just give us a little introduction to yourself and how you're involved with tiktok campaigns and creation if we could start with perhaps uh yunan Hi everyone, my name is Yanan. Um, I head up the content and influencer marketing team at PhD. So we help brands across different verticals to work with influencers across social media channels. So I have been at PhD for nearly uh, seven years now and my background has been social media marketing and content marketing. So with TikTok being the rising social platform for influencers, uh, we've been collaborating with um, TikTok video creators to help brands with producing engaging and entertaining content and driving brand awareness and social engagement. Nice. And uh, Ollie? Hi guys, um, I'm Oli. I'm a creator on TikTok, Instagram and YouTube, predominantly actually on TikTok. Um, I do things from, I specialise in impressions and fact videos. So what Dan was speaking about earlier, the learn on TikTok hashtag, which is becoming a big driving force moving forwards. My contribution there is more in the um, sort of fact department that people may or may not know about, building the films that I also do impressions from. Nice. And <laughs> Hello again. Hi. Yes. Uh, if you were if you were already watching earlier on, you, you know who I am. But I, I work at Guinness World Records. Um, I've looked after social media there for about six years. Um, we've been on TikTok since about January 2019. I believe that we are in the top five most popular brands on TikTok at the moment. But having said that, you know, there aren't loads of brands on there yet. So it's not like a massive claim to fame, but we're doing OK. I think we've got nearly 10 million followers and we've been working uh, quite closely with TikTok UK for various things like uh, live live broadcasts and uh, and the, the new learn on TikTok um, initiative as well. Nice. And a uh, little bit from me, I am a marketing director at Alify. I have been going to social days for about three or four years now, working with Lucy and the team um, on their various events and uh, just absolutely a personal experience and um, run events on it in the past, hence why i'm here um so let's talk about some positive stuff around tiktok and how are people actually using now what's kind of like some of the creative things you see people doing on the channel and what's working best uh should we start with ollie yeah um so i think um again i, I don't know if i'm repeating myself for people that spoke to dan earlier but the things that are a shorter format that are making people laugh for me personally that's the sort of thing that I share something I can relate to a connection so um, anything that's based around sibling rivalry to that one friend in a group that those sort of uh, accounts that have turned meme inspired content into short form video content that allows you to share it to your wider audience um, as well as obviously keeping a close eye on my competitors and hopefully seeing them not kill it too much um, but yeah, for me, it's all about the comedy, making people laugh. Um, when TikTok first came out, it was a breath of fresh air from uh, the two-dimensional format of Instagram um, and all of the stigmatism that went along with that. So it's nice to see people bring their personalities and not hide behind photographs. Nice. And Dan? Sorry, it's done. Hi, <laughs> I, I was, uh, my stream was interrupted then by our, our, um, our AV guy. Um, so yes, uh, the things that I, I find really exciting on there are uh, obviously the surprising moments, the really human moments. There's so much creativity on the platform and, and I'm just really amazed by 
by how some people have taken um, something, you know, that goes beyond the dance challenges. Because the dance challenges are cool to begin with, but actually what people have taken and, and evolved them about. An example that comes to mind is probably the, the guy from the Washington Post. Um, I don't know if you uh, follow the Washington Post on, on TikTok, but the way that he has kind of trans he's come up with all these amazing creative ideas of presenting a newsroom, you know, it's the things that aren't necessarily going to be, you know, really cool and sexy that people have really run with and, and, and kind of gone with a really creative and interesting approach with. That I, I find really interesting. Um, and and uh, I was just watching something from the English Heritage the other day, having people about Stonehenge and, you know, things like that. I, I've, I, just, I just like the fact that it's a place for everything um, and, and everyone's welcome. And there's no kind of there's no kind of snobbery and there's no kind of are you cool if you're not cool you can't come and join our gang it's not like that at all it's really inclusive perfect and you know um as my, my experience of start using the app was actually um back in 2016 when i was first launched in china called uh, douyin um i remember i got so addicted to it uh, and my families and friends in china were all using it mom was on it and um, she had a great time using it um, so since then the, the platform has seen incredible growth and I think overall app has provided a great uh, very easy experience of creating editing videos I've got effects filters and stickers for users to choose from and I don't think there is one central theme on how people are activating on it and um, because there are so many things like lip syncing dancing comedy sketches you know dots and then uh, of course lots and lots of cat videos so I think it's a platform that allows everyone to become a content creator and being a photographer and, and um, videographer myself um, I remember back in the days how time consuming and editing can be so you know from filming to post production involves very kind of a technical um, uh, techniques to allow people to produce very quality video but now um you know i'm just amazed that apps like you know um social media apps like tiktok um actually allow people to editing videos uh, really quickly and they are quality videos as well and it's not just about adding backgrounds to it and not just background music um but also um there's like a special effect like body uh, like a freeze frame background for example so um i i've definitely seen like the popularity started to uh, rise more in lo lockdown period um because uh, TikTok is a platform providing like a very light-hearted content, and my favorite content um, was actually one um, that caught my eyes during lockdown when everyone's really bored um, being at home and they start creating these really engaging content. So this is basically a, a series of videos called uh, Water effect i mean you can still search on it um it's got 1.4 million videos so it's basically a special effect and people can um and use it to different videos i don't know if any of you uh, come across of it um it became really popular a few months ago and basically um you can see lots of um uh, families uh, engage uh, using the special effect um, for example like who did the be uh, best dive in the living room pool because it basically it gives you like the waterland effect um, so they can do like the diving right. challenge um, yes you must probably yeah, come across it um, and there's some other like a, a funny acting videos like Titanic and Little Mermaid um, and some like a uh, kitchen floods for example I, I can spend hours basically just going through the videos and there are also videos like you know good cause for even environment protection for example they put the dog next to it as well to show there's a plastic around it for the ocean i think basically i just think um it shows the variety of creativity lives on this platform it's so inspiring for others because um the platform itself creates a community and a culture which allow people to be so creative and also um it's just a, a interesting snapshot of today's ever-growing thirst for video content um, and young people are really adapting and using it for self-expression so um i think overall um i find it really fascinating yeah, I think we can definitely all say that we've spent hours just sat there watching content and scrolling through, seeing all these different videos. But definitely, the the overarching theme from all of your answers there is the being able to be creative, expressive. Whereas people aren't feeling they have to put too many fields on; they can just create their content and kind of roll with it. So, what kind of allows brands to use 
TikTok as like a differentiator? What makes it such a different platform for brands? If we perhaps start with uh, Dan with this one. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think uh, I think it gives brands the opportunity to really show their human side, um, and, and I and I think that you know so often if you're a, a bit too corporate with your approach, it, it it turns people off, and 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 maybe it's um uh, you know for us it's all about our record holders. That's what we are. Um, so our record holders uh, are what makes Guinness World Records. We're not kind of uh, you know I. I it, we would struggle to engage people if our rep, if our videos were um, interviews with our adjudicators, for example, or, or you know people that work at the company. I think that first and foremost, people come to us because they want to see something awesome being done and a superlative, awesome thing that's broken a record um, and lots of action. Um, so uh, I, I'd say that if 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 a brand wants to wants to join TikTok, I think you have to look at what makes your brand really connect with other human beings, um, and I think that. That's definitely the, the best way forward to, to think about it. And also something that will make people smile and, and feel sort of, um, uh, as you know, I was saying, uh, and, and Ollie mentioned as well, that it's all about human connection and people are very positive on there. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a warm community and people are open to uh, new ideas and new approaches. Uh, so just, you know, throw out a few, few surprises, maybe tell people something they didn't know about your company or uh you know something fun and interesting that's uh, that's happening um but yeah it's, it it really is about showing what it is that uh what it is that makes you human yeah and yeah anything to add on that point i completely agree with dan it definitely shows human connection and and i think most of the social media platforms nowadays basically offer brands the opportunity to engage with their consumers in a, in a very kind of an intimate way and we know social channels like instagram facebook all allow us to uh, engage with branded content and you can share likes and comments but i think what different um that TikTok provides is, on the other hand, um, it's, it's a platform for content creators. Um, so it inspires not only just what like comment, but also create them uh, and gave the brands an entire new approach to getting their products seen through user generated content. And for a long time, we, we know, you know how powerful user generated content are, uh, which allow brands to interact with their uh, audience in a, in a very um, encouraging way to encouraging for collaboration so it, it's a platform for brands to collaborate more with users in a very fun and a creative way so i think also they can reach a whole new audience via this new platform as well um which uh, is kind of the main differentiator between between the TikTok and other social channels i think yeah and, and from a creative perspective how are you working with brands to help them differentiate themselves on the platform yeah, so, um, so, so just building on. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Are you talking to me, or we? Yeah, sorry. Um, I, <laughs> I was addressing Billy as a creative. Uh, well, we'll come back to you at the end, yeah. Yana, shall we? Oh no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not. I, I was just going to say, just sort of building on that. Obviously, um, for me, looking at the value that a creator gives a brand on TikTok, breaking it into three elements: you've got the creative act, um, you've got how unique it is, because obviously, if you're putting an advert on television. You might want to hit the three percent of people that are watching but if you've got someone that doesn't so niche on something like TikTok, you're obviously diving into a whole audience that are there sitting waiting ready as your customer basically i spent a lot of time doing harry potter impressions um i had a, a sort of harry potter um i don't know what the best word is for them but they sold merchandise a subscription service and i basically accumulated all of the harry potter people that were on TikTok at the time pretty much and then we landed a campaign for every single person that was pretty much watching and then obviously the sales then skyrocket so the value of how unique and specialized it can be the creativity that comes with that and the fact that me as myself i sit here as a part-time lawyer marketing assistant editor you know you can email me and you can get the results within 24 hours rather than having to go through a chain of people that may or may not be on holiday so you're speeding up the process you're providing value and you're doing it for a third of the price as as a whole agency and its entity as well. Wow, you can't argue with that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So one of the key differences of TikTok itself, though, as a platform, is its positivity. I think that's something that we all notice as we sit online. We've mentioned um, that we don't find those kind of barriers to entry as people are creating content on the platform. Do you guys think this positivity is going to kind of last on the on the platform, and kind of why has it flourished? Dan, I know you brought up this point earlier, so it'd be good to get your. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that it, it is a really positive place, and I think that's what makes it so attractive for people. I think that um, uh, you know, you you only have to dive into the community, uh, into the community comments under each post uh, to kind of get an impression that most people are really positive. And I've seen um, negative comments actually getting getting told off by by other people on TikTok. It's not that kind of party, you know. Pe people that are on TikTok don't want negativity. They've, they've come there because it's a happy place and it's a fun place and it's a good place. And, uh, and actually other people that are on there totally get that. I think over time, you know, the community may change as it expands. It's growing rapidly. And I am starting to see a few kind of little negativities here and there that kind of get upvoted. So, and I think that the, the same thing happened in the early days of Facebook. Facebook used to be all about connecting with your friends and telling them about what you've done in your day. And now it's become a bit of a behemoth of lots and lots of different things. And in the same way with Instagram, to begin with, that was kind of all about, isn't this a beautiful photo of uh, sunset or my dinner? And, you know, take you on a, on, a on, a, on a journey through my diary kind of thing. And, and it was very personal, but now it's become kind of a big e-commerce thing. And, you know, uh, the app itself is an enormous kind of Frankenstein monster of all of these different features that, uh, quite complicated so um i think you know i'm hopefully they can maintain it um and, and hopefully the community will continue to be positive nice uh and you know and ollie do you have anything to, to kind of add to those points uh, yeah, I think the the platform itself has created a very engaging um, community, um, and I think from a user perspective, because um, the the way the, the the algorithm works, it always um, feeds you the content um, that's relevant to your interest, and um, the more videos that you consume, and um, the platform tends to understand what kind of content do you like to consume, and it started serving you all the relevant content, which means that you know people tend to discover more entertaining, more interesting, or more educating content which they want to consume, and which it, it definitely is a positive spin on, on from a user perspective. And secondly, the culture um, that the, the, the platform itself created um, from day one is being you know very entertaining, and it's uh, created such an engaging community for people to be so creative. Um, so I think overall that definitely um, it, this positivity will be keep uh, flourishing uh, in, in the future. We can hope so. Ollie, how are you getting on with positivity online versus, for example, TikTok and Instagram? Um, yeah, it's just sort of building on both points. I think TikTok as an app is much more designed and built to grow. They want you and your content to be seen as what it feels like on maybe the Facebook owned platforms at times it can feel like you are battling a marketing machine where if you're not feeding it with slots of coins, you're not really going to be seen as much. So it feels like there's less of a battle in terms of organic growth, um, which obviously for me as someone is people say, oh, how much is it per post? And you give them a quote, but what they don't realize is that per post is actually the last four posts plus the next four posts plus your post. So for the organic growth to be supporting me, it kind of wipes the floor with the whole monetary thing and gives me that satisfaction and positivity because if I'm growing organically for me that's ultimately my goal um and then just going back to the um different sections of TikTok obviously like what I put out on TikTok isn't necessarily what I want to be consuming myself so the way I engage with content on TikTok has provided me with a sort of mix of personal finance stroke humor TikTok then you look over someone's shoulder and they're seeing a completely different stream of videos and I've started to um, hear and see more of people saying, oh, have you seen this? And actually, I'm like, no, as within the beginning, because there were so few creators, chances are the few page was everyone's few. Page. But now we're seeing niches grow and people sort of commenting, oh, I've landed on Harry Potter TikTok now um, as, as the algorithm starts to develop and, and the user interface starts to develop. But I think as a positivity thing, I, I think we've still got a long way before um, any kind of corner is turned with, that whole negative vibe, as Dan was saying about the negative comments, I feel like for every one negative comment, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of positive ones, and that um, is 
is there adjudicating those who are trying to bring other people down, which is a positive thing to see. Nice, and hopefully we can keep that on this platform a lot longer. Going back to your earlier point, Ollie, um, kind of you mentioned Facebook owned apps. How are you kind of investigating each of you um, TikTok alternatives and, and, and how are you using things like Reels or Triller or things like that? Ollie? Um, yeah, so Reels, I initially just thought, let's just bang the TikToks onto reels and see what happens and hope for the best. Um, I think in the beginning it was slightly glitchy. It seems to be sorting itself out now. Um, I do have a personal account and I'm sort of playing with how they're doing organically. And again, it seems to be because I've partnered with brands on my main channel who I've approved to um, put some paid spend behind the post versus my personal account. Actually, the personal account with far fewer followers, the reels are doing better. So I have to see in the long run how it's going to work um, across the board, but I'm going to start producing more specialist content for reels that matches what I do on Instagram, because even though I create on both, I don't actually do the same thing on both, contrary to what most creators do. So um, I've, I've got quite a way to go, I think, before I figure out reels. But um, Triller, actually, I think, are, and especially the team at Triller, are trying to um, scoop off the TikTok lot, and there's been plenty of emails flying around there. So we'll see what happens in the long run. But um, yeah, Triller definitely something I'm diving into and reels more practice more practice that's really interesting that you are actually making a real effort to to get on both of those platforms or, or or change up content specifically for them you know are you are you advising the same for your clients or working on on um those alternatives with your clients yeah I think for reels it's probably um a, a bit early stage um for us to see, uh, test it out really um I mean for TikTok itself um influence marketing on that is is very early stage but I think um regardless um I think uh, our recommendations always be testing 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 um especially um when our clients are reaching out to young um Gen Z audience and that's where um they they are and um they need to find a way to produce uh, engaging content whether that's branded content or to work with content creators like Ollie to reach out to these audience. Um, but I think the good news is we started slowly seeing um, all the other alternative social platforms um, like Reels or I know Facebook is also um, looking to launch a new um, short video platform. I think it's called Lasso and YouTube, um, something called Shots. Um, so it's basically it's the future of social media uh, marketing. And I think um, brands need to act really fast, get on it really quickly. Yeah, and Dan, how, how are you? Are you acting fast and getting on all of those uh, new alternatives? Uh, so we've been on Byte for about a year. Um, Byte is, is uh, I think, it's not as easy an experience as, as TikTok. And TikTok is really sticky. Um, Byte, we've, uh, we've had limited success, but we're plugging in. Um, reels we've uh, we've definitely been experimenting with and we'll be uh, going forward uh, I think in the next month we've got a new uh, one book coming out so we've got loads of new record holders to announce so they'll definitely be um, featured on reels um, uh, and uh, and I think I, I, there's certain things I quite like about reels and some things I don't like about reels uh, it does feel a little bit like a question or not because they seem like they pushed it out there really quickly uh, given the political situation in the US and uh, potential TikTok be shut down. So it feels at the moment like it's kind of a, a side product of, um, of stories, the stories video um, feature, um, and it doesn't have the same kind of level of um, stickiness that it has, but I'm sure that over time they'll work on that. Triller for, uh, for us, I think, is, is tricky because it's kind of focuses around music, um, and uh, so there's all the issues around licensing and all that. So I think probably a great one for uh, for influencers, but not so much for brands. Perfect. All right. Well, I've just been told by the AB team that we're wrapping up in about three minutes, so I will skip to the end. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys each for your kind of one piece of advice for how brands can work with TikTok influencers in 2020. And should we start with Yanan? Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, influence marketing is not yet a, a widespread a practice on TikTok, uh, but I think it is only a matter of time. Um, as the Gen Z population matures, um, being an early adopter of influence marketing on TikTok uh, will definitely help brands expand their reach. Uh, 
um, met with a large audience in a way that is relevant, uh, meaningful, and value driven. So uh, I'd say that be a forward thinker, uh, be efficient, determined, and experimental. Uh, you only have 15 seconds to impress, uh, so you might as well um, be a forward thinker and act fast and get approvals um, from internal stakeholders to, to stay ahead and, and really establish uh, understanding of um, what experimentation um, means um, to the company. Um, constantly learning and testing is definitely part of the, uh, the road to TikTok success. And um, in terms of working with influencers, um, I, I think it's pretty much the same um, working with influencers on other channels. Always um, give them the freedom to create authentic content. That, that's very important to the, uh, to the uh, audience, as um, probably Oli, uh, you agree. Like, um, it's re very important to be authentic and always relevant. So I'd say um, give them plenty of freedom to, to collaborate um, uh, and to, to be more kind of engaged and to their target audience. Perfect, and uh, I will link it to Oli then. As <laughs> yeah, just um, building on 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 that really. Um, well, of course, it's important to be authentic and organic to what the creator already produces. Um, but something that is really helpful is when you do at least get a pillar to work from, rather than someone saying "do what you do." That can be great, but it can also be a bit like, okay, I'll do what I do, and then you send it to them, and they go, oh, that's not that's not quite what we were thinking actually. So having some people good and just sort of letting people do their thing from that brief is good. Um, obviously, to just research, maybe a um, an influencer has got some insights they can share from a previous campaign on TikTok that's relating to the one that you want. Um, and unlike Facebook, uh, unlike um, Instagram, where you've obviously got a clear call to action from a swipe up or your bio, it's figuring out at the moment what the best path, what the best pathway is for that call to action if there is one. Um, if it's a like and then a comment within the, um, the comment box itself that is then moved to the top, obviously, by the creator, and then you've got a link in your bio. All of those stats can then obviously be shared from previous campaigns to give people a rough idea as to how things have done um, in the past. I would always like it if a brand was to offer an affiliate um, scheme as well as the initial fee, because those can often, especially on TikTok, if something does boom, that can often end up giving you your fee 20, 30 times over if it does really well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, obviously just making sure that it's relevant and organic. And I think it's very clear to see people who will just take every campaign that comes along rather than those who are selective. Um, mm -hmm. And then by association, who you want to be sitting next to on their billboard, as it were. Perfect. And Dan, finish us off with some last little bits of wisdom. <laughs> well, that's quite a challenge. But I, I would say, um, as you know, was saying, keep it really open uh, as much as possible. Um, obviously, you've got to have kind of a, a basic idea of what you, what you want your creators to be doing. Um, but I think that as long as the brief is is focused on something that's uh, so, for example, where we, we put out a challenge for balancing toilet, most toilet rolls balanced on your head. And there were all kinds of different approaches that people took. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and actually, when it's something that people feel quite passionate about as well, they're more likely to engage. So you'll get a lot of goodwill off the back of the influencers who have engaged with it, but at the same time, uh, everyone else on TikTok wants to be involved in the party as well. And I, I read yesterday that um, Dettol in India did a hand washing challenge and it's got 125 billion views uh, of, of, of the various videos that have been created for that. So it's just, it, it has the potential to just go absolutely bonkers. If you've got in mind that the influencers start the ball rolling with their creativity and their fun, and then everyone else feels like they want to join the party. So that's kind of the best approach, I think, is, is make something that people can roll with and come up with different ideas and approaches, give them kind of a central point, but also make it like a party that everyone wants to invite. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for your amazing insights from this panel. I think this has been really enlightening. Um, I think we do have a lot of questions, as I'm seeing in, our, in the app chat. So um, I think we're bringing on Lucy now. Hopefully. Hello. 
we're bringing on Lucy. Yes, we're bringing on Lucy. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for such a great panel Hi. session. Really good. <laughs> um, we have so many questions, but we don't have much. We've got literally like about seven minutes or something like that. So let's see how many questions you can answer in that time. Okay. Um, Dylan Tillman has a question. Leaving an early question, he says. Um, TikTok is such a rapidly changing app with what trends and what is entertaining for the viewer how do you feel about keeping up with how quickly it changes as me this is a question is best so i'll just say um ollie do you want to drop in on that one just that yeah sorry it, it, it kept cutting out a bit but in terms of um trends and how quick things are moving forward. Um, if I'm partnering with a brand that wants me to do a trend video, sometimes within three or four days, if it's not trending, we can get pushed back and we have to redo it. So as soon as there's a trend there, if you wanna hop on the trend, I'd say 24 to 48 hours max. There are some people out there that have accounts that actually their whole account is dedicated to what they predict as being forthcoming trends based on hashtag analysis. So finding one of those accounts could be a good idea. Um, and then in terms of any new feature, if, the, if that happens, just try and use it, really. Does that answer it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that does. I hope that answers your question there, Dylan. Um, Anna has a question, and Giselle wants to know, how are you dealing with the privacy issue and the boycott ban in the US? Who would like to take that one? I think I, think I can that one. Um, Yes, yeah, so with, with the recent news about TikTok buying in the US and potentially in the UK, and there's a lot of kind of, uh, you know, drama has been happening in the last few months saying, oh, sh shall we continue using TikTok, both from, you know, users and um, um, the brand's perspective and uh, lots of um, content creators and lots of brands um, heavily inv invested in uh, on the app and they don't, surely they don't, don't want to stop. So my uh, top two recommendations has, uh, the, has always been, the first one being, it's called a, cross pollination so i i think it doesn't matter how many social um platforms that you are investing heavily uh, you should always um divert the the audience to other social platforms you should never rely from a brand's perspective you should never just rely on one social platform if say um, if let's say tiktok is going to be gone tomorrow then you still be fine because you have all the other um video content hosted on the um on YouTube, on Instagram, on other social platforms as well. And, num and number two being always, always bring your audience back to the website, uh, you know, to your email list, for example, so they can be your only assets. Um, so whenever people uh, are going away from the social channel, then you know you have the branded content on the website, which is like a content hub to help them to keep there and to continue help, help uh, the users to engage with um, with your branded um, content. So that's definitely my top two advices. Wow, Can I just that's add to that really very good. quickly? Yeah. Just yeah. from the UK perspective, let's say hypothetically, if you are in the UK, which I hope you are for this, but if all the American creators were not allowed to use the app anymore, that means you as a UK creator has more of a spotlight. Even that one is. That's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Um, okay, so we have a question from Michelle here. Michelle um, says, I'd like to hear about tips on launching a new channel on TikTok, especially for large corporate companies, and how to approach it without looking like you're trying too hard. Dan? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, is, it is easy to fall into that trap, isn't it, of looking like you're trying too hard and not being... Uh, not being cool so i would say probably um talk to the people in your company that are more inclined to be TikTok users uh go and go and seek their opinion have a chat with them um it may be that this is your intern or it may be that it's uh you know most likely your uh community manager or someone like that um it, it has you know in recent times been um a, a platform that's mainly uh, dominated by kind of, uh, I guess, people in their uh, in their teens and twenties. So uh, yeah, just seek their opinions, seek their creativity. Um, see, it's, uh, they'll have a better idea of it than uh, than you will. I mean, 
for me uh, personally, I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit past it, but uh, I I feel like <laughs> I feel like we've still got something to say because we're mainly uh, talking about our record holders and their achievements as opposed to talking about um, our brand. So uh, yeah, so 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 definitely mind the ideas of uh, the people that are in your company that already know what, uh, what TikTok's all about and uh, the kind of thing that works well. Does anyone, does anyone want to add anything to that? No? Okay, good. So we've got another question from Gail, and she's saying, TikTok is a natural progression from the defunct Vine. How do you think TikTok can avoid the same fate? Um, Vine didn't enough money for Twitch, she's saying. I mean, I don't know like the facts about this, but who can answer? I uh, I can probably answer the of this. Um, I, I think TikTok is definitely a uh, advanced version of Vine, uh, which um, I think Vine basically provided um, a lip syncing uh, feature, which TikTok um, has improved a lot from a, from a um, uh, app and user perspective. It has other features, like I mentioned earlier, you can you can use so many different um, special effects um, filters um, and I think the app itself created a, a very different culture one um, uh, very different than than, than buy uh, when wine first started and it, it kind of like die off one that you know when the when people start feel like okay this is probably just an app that you can do lip syncing whereas um, TikTok has encouraged a lot of like a uh, very creative um, video creators to do something completely different and make it highly relevant to our current social culture so I think it's definitely going to have a very different uh, uh, future amazing thank you okay guys well we're gonna have to wrap this up now because we've got to move over to our next sessions we've got a full pack day ahead of us can i just say a huge thank you to esme nina ollie and dan because you guys have been amazing and provided so much value and insight into tiktok um is there anything you guys want to say before you go do you want to let us know how we can all find you or follow you or um you know talk to you afterwards? and also in the app don't forget you can still ask these guys questions if you want to they'll be able to answer them um as they go yeah let, let us know how we can find you start with esme sure so the best place to find me you can either message me via the app or uh i am very active on linkedin so find me on linkedin i'm afraid all my instagram is full of personal pictures of dogs and things like that so it's not quite as exciting <laughs> but yeah linkedin for me thank you esme and um, you know you know uh, yes, so similar to Esme, um, find me on LinkedIn is the best place, but you can also try to search me on TikTok. I haven't got uh, lots of followers and some uh, some very questionable and random videos, but yeah, um, TikTok, uh, Instagram and Twitter. So just basically my name, Yanan Wang. Thank you. And Oli? Um, so I'm by Oli B, B-Y-O-L-L-I-E-B, by Oli B across every platform, um, probably Instagram or LinkedIn is the best place to catch me if you want to send me a message. Um, and Dan, I'd like to send you a message to see if there's already a Guinness Book um, record holder of the most film characters singing a song in one take with some description to see if there is and if we can beat it. Oh, wow, that okay. sounds good. There I'm you up go. for that. Yeah, I'll look into it. <laughs> uh, okay. Excellent. That sounds like a challenge. Um, my name my name on Twitter is Dan Thorne UK, all one word, and you can find me on LinkedIn as well. But also feel free to chuck me a few messages via the Social Day app, which actually is awesome, Lucy. I think it's really, really good. I, I, lo I love what you guys have done with that. It's really cool. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank you guys again. Thanks so much. We have to go now. Um, but everybody, give these a virtual round of applause as if they were really on the stage. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you um, really soon. Thank you. Thank so, you. thank you. Okay, move, thank you. Now we're moving thank over you. to Bye. go to do some networking and visit the booths and that kind of thing. Um, so, what you need to do is you need to go into the app. You need to click on booths. You need to choose a uh, time, um, uh, a sponsor, Falcon, Talk Walker, Agora Pulse, maybe a vintage. Click on one of those. Choose a time for the booth. The booth will appear on both your live stream and in your app, and you can go and see them. You can win prizes. You can chat to them and that kind of thing. Um, it would really mean so much to us if you go and visit the booths. It's um, they are doing great things. These guys are, and they offer great support as well. And then we're just having a quick break then, and we will be back at a eleven forty-five, where we will be hearing um, from on the live stream 
one, Simon Lucy Hype Collective or the live stream, two, Instagram battle paid V's Organic with Kirsty Smith Social Circle. Um, please keep your questions coming in throughout day we'll do our best to answer them don't forget to keep sharing your selfies and everything else on social media hashtag social day 20 we will pick them up jade is giving away prizes across the event and we'll be back here again in literally half an hour see you soon guys